Our next speaker owns a software company here in Ann Arbor where they help people build tech startups. Let's get a warm welcome for Steve Schwartz. Hello. Is this on? All right. I have a confession. Uh, I'm an engineer, and I run a company that builds tech startups. So most of the talks I give are technical topics backed by studies and evidence. This is not one of them. Um, when I was a kid, I used to think adults were awesome, superheroes with the ability to stop time and heal injuries, also kung fu grip, and I couldn't wait to become one. I couldn't wait to hit what I know as the uh, super adult magical knowledge slope, <laughs> whereby I would attain maximum adulthood knowledge level, which is about 9,000 on the knowledge scale, um, but that never came. And I think it started to become evident to me that it wasn't going to happen around the time I graduated college. And I realized I still have no clue what the hell I'm doing. Um, and then one evening, I was at a grocery store, which is this place where adults go. And this little kid ran into me. And, and I just you know, laughed it off and said something I don't really remember. Um, but I, I'll never forget what the kid's mom said when she grabbed him. She grabbed the kid because I was horrified. I couldn't believe it. She grabbed the kid, and she says, Say you're sorry to the nice gentleman. <laughs> gentleman? <laughs> Holy shit. This woman thought I was an adult. Which is weird because the older I get, the dumber I feel. And there's actually uh, a name for this phenomenon. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect, uh, also the imposter syndrome, which basically states that the more competent you get at something, uh, the more you tend to underestimate your abilities relative to everyone else. Um, and so I started to think about why this is. And it actually made a lot of sense when I realized that all my knowledge could be divided into three categories. The stuff I know, the stuff I know I don't know, and the stuff I don't know I don't know. These categories have been taught by great philosophers throughout history like Socrates and Donald Rumsfeld. Um, <laughs> for an example, uh, let's say I'm an engineer and you ask me to build a bridge. Now, I know that I have to consider uh, climate when picking the building materials. This is stuff I know. I don't necessarily know what material to pick, but I know how to look it up. That's the stuff I know I don't know. But if I'm a doctor or a veterinarian and you ask me to build a bridge, I don't even necessarily know that a material strength can be affected by environmental factors. The stuff I don't know I don't know is the only category that can potentially be dangerous. So along these lines, I like to define wisdom as one's ability to be not dangerous. Um, but that's not what we're taught growing up. In school, we're tested on that little thing of stuff we know, um, which sucks because even if you do well on the test, that stuff's just going to leave your brain by the time you actually need it in life. The problem is that as individuals, on a cosmic scale, we can't possibly know that much anyway. So life is too short. So why do we put so much pressure on ourselves to know stuff and then feel bad when we don't? We feel embarrassed. So my bold claim for the night is that it doesn't matter what you know. It's not about putting everything in the first category. It's about learning. As long as you're taking stuff out of the third category, it doesn't matter which of the other two categories it goes into because neither is really that dangerous. So being not dangerous in life is about saying, I don't know, a lot. Um, it's, it's about you know, being okay with the fact that the person you're talking to is going to know stuff you don't. So it's okay to ask them questions. It's about uh, pursuing uh, tangents just out of curiosity and, and researching the hell out of anything that remotely interests you. Like, why do spatulas come in silicone, rubber, plastic, stainless steel, and several different types of wood? So in order to be not dangerous, uh, it's my responsibility to admit that I have no clue what the hell I'm doing most of the time. Um, but that's OK. If we accept the fact that maybe our notion, our childhood notion of adults as being these confident, all-knowing beings is maybe wrong, then it becomes easier to say, I don't know, and admit ignorance, even in your field of expertise. Because if you're an expert and you don't know something, then by definition, it's possible for experts to not know that thing. So figure it out and get on with your life. The funny thing is, there's actually an entire demographic of people in this world who have an uncanny ability to admit ignorance and say they don't know and, and to constantly learn, and that's kids. So my biggest role models in life are kids, and what I'm saying is my duty as a mature adult 
is to be more like a kid. Now, I could tell you that this image is a metaphor for trying to distill the universe's knowledge and store it in your head, uh, but honestly, um, my talk ended on the last slide, and I just thought this was really funny. LAUGHTER